I am sick and tired of Kentucky losing and everything, so today I'm going to fix their program in NCAA football. As a kid, I remember watching my Wildcats dominate in basketball, but the football program was pretty bad until Mark Stoops came in, and he was able to do stuff like break our 31-game losing streak to Florida. But now it's time for me to pick up where he left off and bring Kentucky a championship. It probably isn't happening anytime soon in basketball with what I've painfully witnessed recently, so my job in this video is to fix the Kentucky football program by winning a national championship within the next five years. I'm only allowing myself to recruit recruit out of Indiana, Ohio, Tennessee, and obviously Kentucky, along with only being able to play three regular season games a year. But if I fail to win a championship after five seasons, I have to give away a jersey to a random commenter on this video, and I have to live in pain knowing Kentucky sports are on a decline. My first move as head coach of the Wildcats is to heavily target five-star Travis Johnson, and it's a good thing he's from our state because his throwing stats are incredible. I've never seen somebody bust as bad as Rashad did. What do you mean by that? But I was also able to find gyms like Fred Parham, so I can't can't really complain. After redshirting recruits that wouldn't see the field this season, it was time to get into our first year in the new SEC where Texas and Oklahoma were now in the other division. Now unfortunately our first game is at number one Alabama so I was expecting us to lose by a lot, but on the bright side I think we're going to get a ton of these recruits and it's between us and Louisville for Travis Johnson, so it is crucial that we win this rivalry game. As somebody that's been a Kentucky fan my whole life, it is more important than ever that we don't lose to the Cardinals, so I am locked in right now and Ray Davis is going to start us off with a touchdown. Approaching halftime, not much has changed. We still have a seven point lead and I almost intercepted that. But since I couldn't, they're going to end up bringing it within four. In all honesty, Devin Leary hasn't been great for us so far, but I would say most of it is user error and that's a perfect example. The good news though is Louisville is not playing like a top 13 team and that halfback wheel route is going to work. I'm even going to go for the two point conversion just to make it a two possession game and that is not going to be a great decision. But we've played so well on defense, I'm not even phased. Here on third and fourth, with about five minutes left, I don't think anything's gonna get open and we force a stop. I know it's just a video game, but it feels so good to beat Louisville. And they definitely did not deserve to be ranked as a top 15 team, but we will take it all day. This is the one matchup I don't wanna lose once in this rebuild. And that wins convincing Travis Johnson to be a Wildcat. We're also already a top 25 team in year one, but that's kind of expected for Kentucky football. The hard part's gonna be getting this team into the playoffs. And the next game I'm jumping into is at the Swamp. Florida is undefeated, so this won't be easy. And as a Colts fan, I really want Anthony Richardson to succeed, but not today. For some reason, he's still in college on here. And I don't understand why the Gators are playing so well. They're not going to be this good next year, but I've not been able to do anything, and that should have been an interception. This is honestly getting embarrassing, and I promise next year I'm not going to let this happen. Come on. We cannot lose to the Gators like this ever again. And I'm honestly embarrassed we lost to South Carolina. Now, I couldn't tell you why Ohio State's on the schedule, but we should just chalk this one up as a loss. And I think the only way to redeem ourselves is to schedule everybody for a visit against Vanderbilt. In the process of simming to that game, I'm hoping we can get some wins, but we just lost to the Hilltoppers. So much for this team with Devin Leary being any good as we are sitting at 2-5, and five. but you know what? I'm not going to complain one bit because future quarterback Travis Johnson has committed. With that news, it's probably best if I just go ahead and sim to the Tennessee game, and I'm not thrilled that we're 4-7 and seven right now, but at least we build Oklahoma and Vanderbilt, which is good wins, and we also are going to take down the Volunteers. I know 5-7 and seven in year 1 isn't great, but I've been able to get two five-star commits to come to Kentucky, and I believe the future is bright because our top three receivers are all sophomores. The Devin Leary experiment really didn't go as planned, but with the number 10 recruiting class in the country, we got Travis Johnson, who I might start as a freshman. He's automatically an 81 overall quarterback, but I might be forced to start senior Bo Allen, who's up to an 85. It's a tough decision, but I want our freshman QB to develop, and four of his first six games are going to be against top eight opponents. He might be set up for failure, but we still have four years to win it all, and I'm going to put together an amazing recruiting class. I do feel like I need to jump into this first game, because if we don't win this, it's going to be a rough season. It literally took the Razorbacks less than two minutes to score on their first drive, but now Travis Johnson's coming in, and he looks good from the start. He is finding Lewis already for a big gain, and with four years of development, can you imagine how good he is going to be by the end of this rebuild if he is already this fast? I can't wait to see how he develops, but at least for now, it has been a little bit of a rough start here at Kroger Field, and with two minutes remaining, we're still trailing the Razorbacks by 10. I'm not happy that we're going to lose this game, but they've been great. And I don't want to put all the blame on Travis Johnson because he is a freshman, but he's been doing stuff like that. He's going to be so much better in a few seasons though. And against Alabama, I think we all know how this one's going to go. I was not expecting a win, but I can't even be upset because I think I'm going to land a majority of these players. I can't say I'm surprised we lost at LSU, but since we've started 0-3, I'm going to schedule everybody for a visit and it's against undefeated number four Florida. For some reason, Bo Allen 
Allen is in the game, but he's been doing very well. And it turns out Travis Johnson has a strained shoulder. That'll probably make this a lot harder to win. And why is Anthony Richardson still in college? For the second season in a row, he is playing for the Gators and the Colts at the same time. And I am getting very tired of losing to him. Here on fourth and three, I think we have numbers on the right side and we are gonna stumble and not pick it up. I can't believe I'm saying this, but we are about to be 0-4. And, and I made the smart choice in not starting Bo Allen. He has been terrible. I never wanted to see that stupid Gator Chomp celebration again, but here we are. And we just got completely embarrassed at home. Year number two is not going well, but I'm going to sim to the Louisville game and annihilate them. Actually, things are going so bad, I had to stop a game before that as we are 0-7. Travis Johnson still hasn't returned from his strained shoulder. So to my surprise, we already have landed six recruits and they're all over 77 overall. If we lose this one to Eastern Michigan, I'm going to lose my mind. This is a 90 overall team and we won by nine. Now we can go into Louisville with some confidence. And once again, I don't know how they're a top 25 team. In real life, we own them. So I'm going to make sure we do it in the video game as well. And I'd love to say that Travis Johnson being back from injury changes everything, but he's still sailing balls. The best thing I can probably do is just try to take off with him in his fast legs. He is not going to pick up this first down though. And he lost the football as well. If they take this back to the house, I'm going to lose my mind. They are almost about to break away. Travis Tisdale, please make the tackle. The only positive I can take away from that is we are going to hold them to three. And with a minute remaining, we still have a slight chance. So do not count us out quite yet. I do need to be in a little bit of a hurry up mode. I'm going to try to roll out with Travis Johnson. He has an open receiver and what a throw. Chris Lewis has been our best receiver by far. So I'm just going to continue to feed it to him. And he somehow makes that catch. But we still only have about 27 seconds left to get into the end zone. And I'm forcing this ball, which is going to work. I'm also going for two because I want to ruin the Cardinals. And I'm just going to take this one in. If they get a field goal in 15 seconds, I promise I will cry real tears, but I think we're off the hook. And like I said, Louisville is not going to beat us in this rebuild. Like always, it's L's down. And I honestly don't even care how the rest of the season goes. Considering we finished three and nine, I don't know how I'm going to win a championship with Kentucky. But when Travis Johnson played, he was pretty solid and his top four receivers will all be back next season. We've been on a decline ever since I took over, but in the long run, I feel like we are getting a lot better as I was able to sign the 13th best recruiting class in the country. Tree. Scott Frost even ended up as our offensive coordinator, which is great for all the boosts, but hopefully he doesn't ruin Travis Johnson, who has developed all the way up to an 88 overall for a sophomore. Going into year three, we're projected to be the worst team in our division, but we're a 95 overall, so I don't think we'll be that bad. And because of how rough our first few games are, I'm just going to sim to the Louisville one. We ended up beating the Razorbacks, but of course we lost to Alabama, and unfortunately LSU as well. Because Louisville's not had a good season, I do feel comfortable simming this game, and we're going to dominate, which is good because next up is the game I'm dreading. This is our third year in the dynasty and we've yet to beat the Gators. So I would love to be able to do it today. And is that who I think it is at quarterback right now? I'm pretty sure he's not supposed to be on the team anymore. So parents need to keep their kids away from the field. And what is up with the Gators using quarterbacks that shouldn't be out there in this dynasty? This was obviously not a catch in bounds, but the refs want to screw us by reversing the play. You can definitely tell who has the home field advantage, but I'm not going to make any excuses as we are going to win this game fair and square, unlike the the Gators and that's a huge play. I don't really have anyone open here so I'm just going to roll out and I'm going to throw it. Our receiver was out of bounds but somehow they're counting it so forget what I said about the refs. Honestly getting a result today would just make it so we could have a decent year and here in the fourth quarter it is a tie game at 21 but I have the worst user in the world so they are going to get in. We cannot afford to lose this one for the third year in a row. That is going to be a big throw and I have no idea how Barry and Brown held on to that but I'm going to find him again. All we need is one more stop and then we can go down and get a field goal but of course Kitna is going to break away and he is free. Not like in life. I mean, it is frustrating they are continuing to score on us, but I am not going away. I cannot lose this game and Dane Key is going to break free. We just have to figure out how to get a stop on the Gators and that should be a pick. But because it wasn't, it is third and 10 and we're going to lock up. And I am sick and tired of losing to the Gators. Nothing seems to be open here on third down, but Johnson makes the play. He floats the ball and it goes straight into an interception. Okay, maybe I should be a little bit better at this game. I can't believe I've just choked it, but maybe we'll beat the Gators next year. This rebuild's gone terribly for us so far, and thank goodness we're going to beat South Carolina. I'm not expecting to beat Georgia, but I might as well schedule people for a visit, and let's see if we can beat the top team in our division. I know we haven't even scored a point yet, but I'm happy with how we've played so far. We're moving it down the field, and I feel like we're so close to getting a touchdown here. I'm going to throw it to Barry and Brown, and he had his route 
outran for him. That's a disgrace, but I'm just going to run commit everybody. And of course, they're going to get out. Okay. Okay. I am so bad at this game. We should not be going down 10 to 0 right now. We're just going to ignore this. Just imagine the position we could be in if I was actually decent. Maybe one year we'll be good enough to beat Georgia, but it wasn't this year. And I just cannot believe how bad we've played. It's probably my fault. This guy stinks! But the rebuild with my favorite team is going terribly. The only thing that's actually worked out for us is recruiting, and that's pretty impressive considering they all come from four states. I'm honestly so fed up, we're just gonna go to the end of the year, and we still have yet to beat Western Kentucky. Somehow, even with that result though, we ended up finishing 7-5, and five, making a bowl game, and it's against the prestigious Georgia State. If we don't win this one, I might as well just delete the game, and of course we actually do. So I have two more seasons to try and win it all with Kentucky, and Travis Johnson had quite the year. The only issue is he's now going to lose all of these receiving targets, and I have to say, this was quite the draft class. Now, you would think that the 37th best recruiting class isn't good for us, but we got so many high overalls that are going to immediately start, so that's very misleading. Travis Johnson is now a 96 overall, and we're actually projected to finish third in our division, so I fully expect us to dominate against Miami, Ohio in week one, and that's what we do. I am worried about our next matchup, though, because Alabama is always going to give us a tough game. I'm hoping we can start out with a touchdown, though. 87 is wide open on the streak. Travis Johnson puts it perfectly on the money, and this is exactly how you want to start a game. They are throwing this ball up and we should have a pick, but even though it wasn't, we are getting the ball back and they are pressing our receivers again. I don't understand. Porter has been so good for us so far and he's only a junior, so we're going to have him for another year after this. I know it's still kind of early, but I couldn't be more excited with how we've started. We're playing amazing and a touchdown here would put us up 21 to 0. I am rolling out. I'm going to hit our halfback in the flat and he's going to dump it in. If Kentucky's ever able to do this in real life, I don't know what I'd do, but it's safe to say Travis Johnson is that guy. Ever Ever since Scott Frost came on as our offensive coordinator, he's been playing even better, so I don't think it's a shock that we're ranked in the top 10 after beating Louisville. Travis Johnson even has a chance to win the Heisman, and I feel like I need to save the two games I can jump into till the end of the year because we have Georgia and at Tennessee. It's going to be risky to sim these next two, but I'm hoping we can win and we don't against Auburn. That is not the result I was hoping for, but when you play in a division this stacked, it's expected to come. The real question will be, how do we do against number 14, South Carolina at home? We win by three. And and at this point, the recruits are just flooding into Kentucky. I think if we can win out, we'll be able to sneak into the playoffs. And Travis Johnson is projected to win the Heisman now. He's extremely close to leading the country in passing yards. And I trust that this team can win these next four games. We're going to see what happens at Texas. We're going to win by three again. And we beat our rivals, Mississippi State, pretty comfortably. The real question will be, can we win at Western Kentucky? And we finally do. And thank goodness Vanderbilt didn't give us any issues. This means our fate is in my hands. And if we win out, we're in the SEC championship. We're going to have to beat Tennessee and Georgia though, but before we get into those games, I have to place an entry on Prize Picks today's video sponsor. I miss football so much, and even though my NBA picks have been working out for me, Prize Picks allows you to play season-long NFL predictions ahead of time, so that's what I had to go with while putting my faith in my boy Jonathan Taylor. As always, if you're located in one of the 30 plus states it's available in, there's a link at the top of the description to download Prize Picks, and if you use code BOARD, you can double your initial deposit up to $100. Anyways, let me know what you think of my NFL predictions, make sure to play responsibly when you use code board, and let's see how the rest of the season plays out. So far, the Bulldogs have not had an answer for Travis Johnson in our offense, but we haven't been able to stop them either, so I really can't say anything. Now, on this play, we are going to get the sack, but the real question is if their kicker is good enough to make this, and he is. This is literally the first successful season I've had at Kentucky, so the pressure is on, and unfortunately, Georgia's already back in our red zone. I'm stuck on the defensive line, but the quarterback misses the throw. Get out of the end zone. Okay, that's huge. We we did not deserve to get a stop there, but ever since then, we have maintained our three possession lead. I mean, it's not like we're playing bad on the other side of the ball, but normally we'd score more points, and this might be one of those plays where we finally get something good for us going. This is an explosive team, but that 35-yard gain's the biggest one we've had all day, and that's a laser. Nothing feels better than beating Georgia at their place, and Travis Johnson probably will win the Heisman. I will be devastated if I lose against Tennessee. So to make sure that doesn't happen at Nayland Stadium, I'm going to have to have a good game, and this kick return would be the perfect start. Bishop is super quick. He's going to get us down to the 35, and that is exactly how you want to open it up. I'm already rolling out with Travis Johnson. I'm going to find the open receiver. We're going to get a big game with Deco Crowdis. He sheds one tackle down inside the red zone, and I told you all, I'm not messing around today. This game is extremely important, and I couldn't get the throw out. If we don't come away with six here because I'm terrible, I'm going to be upset, but we make the catch, or we don't. We drop it in the end zone, and now we have to go ahead and take our three. Psych, I'm going for it. There's 
no way I was going to let Tennessee get away with that, and that is a, another drop. If it wasn't so early on into the game, I would have already smashed my controller, but there's still plenty of time. And I'm sending seven dudes at their quarterback here, showing he clearly couldn't take it. Not many people can handle that, but what's important is it's fourth and inches, and I have made a grave mistake by going for it. We just got screwed over by another drop, and I can't believe how many times that's already happened today, along with our defenders just not playing defense. This has been a very frustrating game so far, but I think we have somebody over the top, and that is a beautifully thrown ball to Jackson. I am not going to let our first ever playoff hopes die at Nayland Stadium, and after a forced fumble on the kickoff, we can take a lead here, which we do. It would probably be a fair assessment to say that defense really hasn't existed today, but there's always been a ton of drops. At least we got the ball back anyways, and I have a plan for this play because it's man-to-man. -man. There's going to be nobody out here on the right-hand side. We just need to make one guy miss with the juke move. Travis Johnson is going to dive into the end zone, and that was an incredible play. It is not often you see a play like that, but Tennessee is just not going away. And once again, we didn't play coverage in the end zone. With four minutes left, they're going to go for the tie, and it's going to be good. But now is our time to just have one smart possession, run down the rest of the clock, and win this game. So we should be, oh no, okay, okay, I don't want to talk about this. I don't want to talk about it. The backwards lateral worked for me on like one or two kick returns, and now I do it all the time, but it very, 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 very rarely works. I had a speech impediment there, but what is important is we're going to return this one. It might be fair to say I'm making this way harder than it needs to be, but we have a chance to get a stop here. And there's no way that that player got open. All right, good. They're bringing it back. And it is third and 24 for Tennessee. So if they pick this up, I will cry. All we have to do is make a tackle. And now it's time to run out the rest of the clock and kick a field goal for the win. Here on third and three, we do need to pick this up. But there's plenty of clear glass in front of Travis Johnson. We're going to get it. And the game is on the line. But I have confidence in our kicker who is going to drill this right down the middle. I am happy with how we finished this year. And our SEC championship opponent is Texas A&M. If we want to make the college football playoffs, we must win this game and this should be a good one on our first possession they've gotten us to a third and nine i don't really know if anything's open here but I'm going to deliver a laser to Porter. And that was a blind read, but I just clicked a button and it paid off. And now we should be getting into the end zone. It's really hard to believe how terrible we were up until this season, but all that time starting to pay off. And I cannot believe they marked him a yard short there, but I will take it. Bishop on the punt return is going to break away and get us back to midfield. So if you were expecting a good start, I'm hopefully going to be able to deliver. Decal Crotus just toasted his corner and we're already up 14 to zero. Unfortunately, I think they're going to respond back, but as long as they continue to press Dekel Crowdus, I am not going to be concerned because we can just throw it up to him and he can just toast whoever is on him. He is so quick. And here on third and eight, I think we have everything locked up. The running back was open. I missed the tackle and this is all my fault. This should not have been a big game. But because of that, they've put themselves in a good position to at least get three points on this possession and they're going to get seven. It is fourth and one and I'm going for it because I'm an idiot, but they cannot press our receivers. We have way too much speed on this team and I'm not sure when they're ever going to learn their lesson. You probably have an even even ever seen a receiving room that has this much speed, but they're very quick. And if we can get a third down stop, I'm going to feel like we're in a great position. Somehow their quarterback just escaped that. We should get an interception. No way. It feels like the computer is cheating a little bit just to keep them in it. So that's frustrating, but we are in a weird position. I'm just going to throw this one up and Deacle is going to toast everyone. This is the most fun I've had playing with Kentucky ever. And I swear, if we give up a Hail Mary to end this half, I'm going to lose my mind. We knocked it down though. And I guess we're not getting cheated that bad. Once again, it is fourth and three, and I might as well throw up some streaks since they want to press us. There's no one over on the side of our 97 speed white wide receiver who is going to burn them. And I cannot believe I'm having this much fun on Heisman mode, but I'm able to just sling it and we're going to score. I didn't realize we had that much speed on the team. But now that I know, Travis Johnson is even better. There's Kentucky's first SEC championship in like 50 years, but somehow Travis Johnson didn't win the Heisman. I have no clue how that happened. He had more passing yards, passing touchdowns and rushing yards than the guy that he lost to. Sometimes this game makes no sense, but I just noticed Equal Crowdus had 20 touchdowns. And if Kentucky can't win a championship in basketball, it's time to do it in football. Tulane is our first matchup, which shouldn't be too bad. And after our last game, I feel like this offense is almost unstoppable. We can make almost any play. Come on, you got to hold on to that. There's no way that they just got the interception there and they're breaking the tackle. If they take this back to the house, I'm going to lose my mind. But that's what I get for coming out cocky and they are going to get in here. I am not happy with that. 
that start, and now they're sending the blitz. We are not beating them over the top. I've thrown two picks in two plays. What worked for us last week against Texas A&M is not working this week, and I need to go back to just running the ball and playing it a lot smarter than I have been. I know it's all my fault, but I was just hoping things would be going a little bit differently, especially because somehow they just picked up the first, and I am losing my mind right now, but we're going to get a stop here or not. Their quarterback somehow broke the sack and delivered a dot. A third and goal stop would make all of the difference, which we get, but we're still trailing 13 to zero. You know, for having the unstoppable offense I thought we did, things have not looked great for us, but the freshman just picked up a huge play, and that was much needed because hopefully we can get a little bit of momentum going. Look at Travis Johnson getting a huge 20, 30 yard rush, putting us in a position to finally find the end zone. Well, it took them until there was a minute and a half left in the quarter, but they finally pressed us, and Deacon Crowder created almost no separation, but he still makes the play. He is probably the most OP player in the game, but I feel like Tulane's done a good job of defending him. They've backed off of him most of the game, and because of that, they're going to have a lead at the half. It's kind of hard to believe we played in SEC all year and never really struggled, but against Tulane, that's been our hardest game yet, and I have no clue how good our kicker is, but I'm attempting the 62-yarder, and that was very stupid. Here on third and 14, I'm stuck on the linebacker, and I think Tulane's going to go deep. I can't get back to it, so we are losing 23-14, to and I think we are in some trouble. All I can do is hope that we actually finish this drive off with points, which we are going to do, but what's really important is getting one more defensive stop, and I think we have everything locked up. There is no way, but because we didn't, they're going to at least get three here, and at least we're going to hold them. Scoring a touchdown on this drive would actually give us a chance to have a lead on the green wave, but for some reason, I just feel like something's going to go wrong. On the pitch, something did go wrong. I was correct. That could have gone even worse for us, and there's the interception. I am terrible. We are going to lose, and this is all of my fault. Their quarterback is trucking us. I'm missing tackles. He is getting first downs, so after getting a defensive stop, we're honestly just lucky to even have a chance in this game. Deco Crowdis is wide open. The quarterback sails it. Sophomore Joel Lewis is in instead, and apparently he was also the one that threw that interception down in the red zone. I am not a big fan of the backup quarterback determining whether or not we make the national championship, but that is back-to-back -back amazing throws from him, and maybe we will be able to score. Deco Crowdis creates separation. He gets into the end zone, but I just realized that we just gave Tulane way too much time on the clock, and I'm not gonna lie. I am a little nervous. We are gonna get a sack. Who knows what will happen on this play? One of our receivers got burnt. Now he's getting toasted and they drop it. But we might be getting bailed out and I am not going to complain in the slightest. Please tell me we're going to lock up. No. Second and 10. They're going five wide. I am sending the blitz. We're going to get in. And that was so risky. But instead of taking a timeout, they just threw the ball and time is going to wind out as we make the tackle, which means we're moving on to the national championship. That was the most stressful game ever. And Ohio State took down Notre Dame. So we play the undefeated Buckeyes in the championship. They might be a 99 overall team, but I did not work this hard rebuilding my favorite school to lose now, especially to Ohio State. They're already sending blitzes, but they have nobody over there on Woods, and I'm just going to throw this ball up to Crotus. You cannot press us. There is no way you should. And Tulane was so smart about how they played us, but the Buckeyes don't seem to be the same. Well, at least defensively, because offensively, I've not been able to get a stop on them yet, and I don't think it's going to happen right here either. What was that? I mean, it looked like we made no effort there to stop them, and I'm just going to throw this one to the running back. What? Listen, I know it wasn't a great read, but look at the physics on this thing. The ball literally went through our player's head and approaching halftime, if this gets any worse, I'm going to want to cry. They're lobbing that ball up and we both miss, which makes me wonder if the SEC was just really overrated this season. We're struggling against Tulane and Ohio State, but maybe we'll eventually figure it out. They are still pressing us, which will make it very easy to come back if they continue to do so. I'm not thrilled with how that half went, but we are not out of it yet. And on third and four, they just threw that ball away. And ever since the conference championship game, I've only been looking for deep balls, which is probably why we've been struggling, but they are so satisfying, and I think we're going to have one here. Deacon Crotus is toasting the man on him, and he is going to be gone into the end zone. Here in the fourth, it's third and ten. I think this is a halfback screen, and we literally lock that thing up perfectly. Sometimes it's hard to believe they keep coming out and pressing us, but I'm just going to take the slant instead, and I am so bad. I am so bad at this game. I might be the worst player in the country. This is my fault. I'm not going to bring home a national championship with Kentucky because I'm so terrible. I legitimately just want to break something and they're just sacking us now. So here on third and 10, we have to pick this up and thank goodness we are able to do so. But the entire reason we're even in this position is because of how terribly I've played. And now our star quarterback isn't getting up. I mean, Joel Lewis got it done against Tulane, but I'm not liking him being in this position. It is very nerve wracking. So I'm just going to hand it off to our freshman running back and he's going to get in or not. Apparently he was Mark Short, so I'm just going to have to QB sneak it. And that's going to give Ohio State about 35 seconds. So we're in a 
lot of trouble. Or not, for some reason they didn't take a timeout, they winded it down to the final second, and now we're going into overtime. It's a good thing that the computer is really, really dumb because we have a chance, and here on third and 11, they have four routes out, the running back's open in the flat, he drops it, and we hold the Buckeyes to just a field goal. A Kentucky National Championship has never felt so close, but I have to play it smart with a backup quarterback, and that's a first down. Ideally, Joel Lewis won't have to throw a single pass on this drive, and on third and inches, I'm already in goal line, we're gonna pick it up, and I'm gonna go with the halfback toss to the outside, the freshman is going to dive, and he's gonna make it. I have won a national championship with my favorite team. That was very stressful, but hopefully that's what the future of Kentucky football looks like.